to Dr. Anthony Fauci. He is, of course, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, also the chief medical advisor to President Biden. Uh, Dr. Fauci, you, you stood next to the president on Monday, as he said, the, the Omicron variant is cause for concern, not cause for panic. Why not? Well, because we don't have enough information to be talking about dire situations. There are some concerning aspects about what the molecular profile of the virus is and what's going on in Southern Africa. But we really need to have filling in the gaps. For example, how transmissible will it be? And what is the level of transmissibility? Importantly, will it evade the protection, for example, of monoclonal antibodies or convalescent plasma or importantly, the antibodies that are induced by vaccination. It, may, it likely will have an impact on that. If you look at the profile of the mutations, the question is what kind of an impact and how much of an impact would it have on protection that's induced by vaccination? The only way to know that is to do what we're doing, namely to get the virus and put it in a form where you can assay the antibodies that are induced by the currently used vaccines and find out the degree to which they neutralize or essentially immobilize, as it were, these viruses. And that's going to take a little time. Likely we'll be getting some information probably within the next week or two, and then further information a little bit later than that. So there's a lot of things we don't know. Also, we don't know anything about the severity of this infection. I mean, we know it's spreading pretty well and pretty uh, robustly in Southern Africa, particularly in South Africa, where they have the capability of monitoring it well. But we don't know at all at this point, though we're getting some inkling as to what it, whether it's severe or not. It could be highly transmissible, but not severe, or it could be any of the combination of the above. So it's really a matter of getting the scientific information, yeah. not jumping to any conclusions and to follow the science. How, how will we know when the variant is detected here in the United States? How will it be announced? Well, the CDC does surveillance on isolates throughout the country. And this is one, fortunately, that the test that we use, it's pretty easy to pick it up. So given the surveillance system that the CDC has going right now, we should pick it up when it comes here. It might already be here, certainly not in large amounts, but it may already be here. And you're going to hear about that. The CDC will make the announcement that that's the case. As soon as they get the information, they will be very transparent about it. The White House said this weekend that, that you told the president, as you just mentioned, it, it's probably going to take two weeks to really know uh, how severe, how transmissible uh, the Omicron variant is. We just heard that New York City is asking folks to wear masks inside. The CDC uh, just told people that they should get a booster shot, upgrading the guidance from can get a booster shot. If, if we really don't know uh, what, what it is yet, how, how do we fight it? What, what's the best tool that we have? Well, we know from experience, Craig, that when you have variants like the Delta variant, which is the variant that has dominated the situation throughout the world and certainly in the United States, even though the vaccines that we are giving to people are directed against the original Wuhan strain, if you get the level of antibodies high enough, it cross protects against variants like Delta. So what we're trying to do when we say, A, if you're unvaccinated, get vaccinated. B, if you are vaccinated, get boosted. Because we want to get the level of those antibodies as high as you possibly can. And even though they may get some diminution in their effect on this new virus, you still almost certainly you're going to get some degree of protection, particularly against severe disease. We don't know what the level of that protection would be. But if history tells us anything regarding other variants, we will at least get some degree of protection. And that's the reason why the president very appropriately said yesterday, go get vaccinated, and if you are vaccinated, go get boosted. When we find out the degree of protection by the antibodies that are induced by vaccine, we will know better what the prediction will be, how we can prognosticate as to what's going on. But we're not going to know that for a while. As I said, likely about two weeks. Okay. For, for folks who, who have plans to travel out of state to see family for, for Christmas, do those folks need to change their plans because of this? No. 
I would not change any plans, but that doesn't mean you should be cavalier about it. People should try and get vaccinated if they're not vaccinated and get a boost as soon as you can if you're eligible within the time frame of getting the boost. And when you do travel, be prudent. For example, many people will be flying. When you're on a plane, you have to wear a mask. Make sure when you're in the airport, in a crowded session, in a place with the food courts or whatever, in the airport, keep your mask on when you're in an indoor congregate setting. Regardless of vaccination status. Regardless of vaccination status. Yeah, I mean, if you are vaccinated and you are in an indoor setting and you do not know what the vaccine status of the other individuals in a crowd in an airport, absolutely wear a mask. A, a number of countries um, at last check, roughly 20, including ours, they put in place these travel restrictions. And I'm trying to understand what, what the goal of those restrictions is. Uh, if, if the idea is to stop it from getting here in the first place, seems like that may be too late. Uh, and if the goal is to keep it from, from spreading wildly, <clears throat> is, is that premature? No, the situation is you really want to buy time. You're not going to absolutely, no way, you're going to prevent it from ultimately coming to this country. But what you can do is you could lessen the bolus of people who might actually be infected from coming in. That might buy you a couple of weeks of being able to prepare better if and when you do have a situation, which is much more when than if. So it gives you a little bit time to try and prepare yourself, to get your diagnostics all set that you know what you're doing, but also to get people to get vaccinated and those who are vaccinated to get boosted. Your degree of confidence that, that, that the... Uh, the current vaccines and, and boosters that exist on market right now, they are uh, strong enough uh, to, to hold back this variant, to protect folks from this variant. No. You're putting words in my mouth, Craig, no, no, that I, I did no, not say. No, no, I, I was asking, what is your degree of confidence? <laughs> okay. All right. You started off with the affirmative. Sorry. Well, my we apologies. don't know as a matter of fact. It's Okay. It is unclear, but from historical experience that we have, is that when you get levels of antibody high enough, for example, with the booster, we have had protection against other variants. So what I'm saying, it is likely that even though that protection might be diminished, that if you get your levels high enough, particularly with the booster, you will get some degree of protection. Maybe a lot, we don't know, but at least some degree of protection, particularly against severe disease. That's what we know right now. If things change, we will absolutely tell you about it. Dr. Anthony Fauci, thank you, sir, as always, for your time and your insight. Appreciate you. Good to be with you, Craig. Thank you for having me.